This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. In his first China visit after taking office, he expressed his expectation to jointly building a China-Malaysia community with a shared future. Committed to the cause of poverty alleviation, he described China's achievements as unprecedented in history. Spoke highly of the Global Civilization Initiative, he stated that all nations belong to one family. He opposes the politicization of technologies and believes that technological progress is neither a threat nor a means to contain others. In this edition of Leaders Talk, we meet the Prime Minister of Malaysia, Anwar Ibrahim. Hello and welcome to Leaders Talk, We we meet leaders, thinkers and trailblazers. I'm Zhou Yun. Our guest today is Anwar Ibrahim, Prime Minister of Malaysia. Since taking office last November, he has embarked his very first journey to China this spring. So what are the major outcome of this visit? Why does he use the word surprised to describe the meeting with Chinese president? As someone who has a deep understanding about Confucianism, what are his expectations on the China-Malaysian culture exchanges between the two countries? Today, we're going to talk to our guest, Anwar Ibrahim, Prime Minister of Malaysia. Your Excellency Prime Minister, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, this is actually your very first time to visit China since taking office as Prime Minister. And your very busy and demanding schedule is going to be wrapped up very soon. So to start with, share with us about the biggest takeaway as well as the major outcome of your visit this time. I think it was uh, the meeting with President Xi Jinping because um, it was not just a normal diplomatic encounter talking about trade investment, but we discussed uh, quite a number of issues relating to our philosophy, our views of the world, issues of values, issue of uh, civilization. We converse as uh, trusted friends, mm -hmm. uh, but of course we did touch on specific issues of uh, what uh, we uh, expect from China and, and vice versa, the issue of um, uh, shared future, um, the issue of uh, trade investments, um, training, and also um, the potential uh, of uh, collaboration between these two countries. But what is to me uh, significant is we expanded that to issues, for example, when I said about poverty alleviation, and the president made reference to that. You see, because I was, since I took over for the last four months, I became very committed to the issue of uh, poverty eradication. Mm -hmm. The success in China is unprecedented. So uh, I said, uh, you know, we can share. So the president was very forthcoming uh, in that field uh, to, to ensure that we benefit from the experience in China. It's not easy. Of course, it's a bigger country, you have to deal with much complex problems. Overall, I sense that um, the president showed so much uh, understanding and passion mm -hmm. for these sort of relations and so much respect, which I feel a bit surprised. What do you mean by your surprise? Does it mean that you, it is beyond your expectations, yes. even though the expectations are actually very high there? Yeah, because uh, President Xi Jinping is a very, a, a very prominent leader in the world and uh, leading, uh, you know, one of the leading economies and, uh, you know, power. But he showed so much deference and, uh, you know, to uh, discuss as equals. And I, I find it very... Uh, I should say touching, and I, I value that sort of friendship. But um, then, secondly, of course, um, we have seen, because of this new wave, this enthusiasm between Malaysia and China, is reflected to the business community. So we find um, it's again unprecedented for so many leading captains of industry. That's actually something that I'm really curious about because economic and trade cooperation has been one of the major highlights between the bilateral relations and China has remained the largest uh, trade partner for Malaysia since 2009. You just mentioned that this time you're not only with, with Chinese leaders but also many business uh, leaders and also delegates here. Some 
MOUs were signed as a kind of outcome. Yeah. So looking ahead, what are some of the new opportunities and the most promising areas of cooperation um, in this regard? The number one in this industry, which is uh, billions of dollars worth, would sit down in a group, 50 of them, to see me discuss and commit to invest. You just talk about the very impressive interactions that you had this time with uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping. So can you give us a little bit more specific details about anything really stand up in your memory, in your recollection this time during your meetings with our uh, president? I started off by saying uh, his passion for reform, his uh, uh, conduct, uh, even in domestic affairs like uh, poverty issues, uh, his concern for the general welfare of the people, and then uh, of the various initiatives, as I said, um, uh, BRI, and then um, the security concerns, and uh, the uh, civilizational initiative. But his response was remarkable. He said, well, Anwar, you are also a student of Confucius. <laughs> uh, you right. seem to he understand Chinese history, mm -hmm. and I see your passion uh, commitment to eradicate poverty in your country. Mm -hmm. And um, you wrote in the Asian Renaissance, the book. So I said, well, <laughs> this is, of course, commendable. Right? So we got the chemistry right, right from the beginning. Uh -huh. When you were sworn in as uh, Prime Minister last November, you told journalists that the role of China is uh, pivotal. And you also said in terms of a lot of relations, you won't leave us as, um, as it is. It needs to be further enhanced. So having said that, what kind of tone do you think your trip this time has set for the future of a lot of relations? And what vision do you have for even fostering this uh, closer ties moving forward? Because I want to make it, make it clear that uh, we are fiercely independent, that we decide what is best for our country. Mm -hmm. China is an important neighbor. Uh, is a major trading partner, is a major investor into Malaysia. We look at history. In my exchanges with uh, the President of JP, you'd be surprised. We, we talk about Cheng He's expedition, uh -huh. we, we talk about Confucius. So, um, and when I, 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 when I wrote to him, thanking him for the Congo Jeritari note, I quoted from, uh, from uh, Confucius, and his reply last uh, yesterday was this. You know, he quoted one of the Confucius sayings that finally leaders or we in uh, having responsibility need to do what is right. What was that quote from Confucius? Yeah, from Confucius, uh -huh. yeah. What needs to be? What, uh, do what is ultimately right. Because there are many oh. considerations. There are many other considerations you should have. But finally, how do you decide? You mm -hmm. decide what is right. So uh, we went along that way. So if you ask me about uh, our relations, of course, we want to have good relations with our neighbors. ASEAN is pivotal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the same time, United States or Europe. But uh, China has a special place because it's a proximity and it's a long history. And there's no hi history of antagonism or aggression of any sort. You see? So that's why I'm, I, I said right uh, from the first day of um, uh, after swearing in, and now coming to China, and I see the warmth, the friendship, just proved what I had believed to be true, because the majority of Malaysia are Muslims, so I take the trouble to meet up with the Muslim leaders in, from China, the Chinese Islamic Association, I go to the mosque and pray with them, and they are joining us for the iftar or the breakfast after fasting, to show that, you know, how accommodating Chinese uh, authorities are, and um, they too is living in a multicultural uh, country. It augurs well for both countries. The friendship between China and Malaysia has a long history. The relations between the two countries have always been at the forefront in the region. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the Belt and Road Initiative. As one of the first countries to join the BRI, Malaysia has reaped great rewards in the process of jointly promoting the initiative. The Malaysia-China Kuantan Industrial Park, located in Kuantan, the capital of Pahang State in the East Bay of Malaysia, is a major BRI project and a demonstration base for cross-border international production capacity cooperation. Since the opening of the park in 2013, the Malaysia-China Kuantan Industrial Park and the China-Malaysia Qinzhou Industrial Park have flourished together. 
thus creating a model of economic cooperation and innovation between the two countries under the model known as Two Countries Twin Parks. The 600-kilometer East Malaysia Railway is regarded as a road bridge connecting the east and west coasts of Malaysia. It is also a BRI landmark project between China and Malaysia. There used to be no railway connecting the state of Kelantan on the east coast to the state of Selangor on the west coast, and when it opens to traffic, it will directly benefit the livelihood of the locals. In recent years, China-Malaysia bilateral trade has developed rapidly and vigorously. China has been Malaysia's largest trading partner for 14 consecutive years. Over the years, China and Malaysia have shared good times and bad times and progress together. As the Malaysian old saying goes, water cannot be separated, a vivid description of the friendly ties between the two countries. Well, talking about the uh, Build and Road initiative, actually Malaysia was among the earliest countries to support this initiative. And thanks to the BRI, we've been able to see not only the flourish of some mega projects, including the East Coast Rail Link, the uh, Two Countries Twin Parks project, but also the Malaysian Duran gaining increasing popularity among Chinese consumers being me, one of them. So Mr. Prime Minister, at the Boao Forum for Asia, you stressed that um, the momentum of this initiative need to be regained. What do you mean by that? And how do you think the development synergies can be better enhanced between the two countries under this uh, initiative? We need to uh, transcend beyond what has been achieved. I mentioned in my speech earlier last month about the Asian Monetary Fund or, you know, or Asian Common Currency of a sort, which the president has responded very positively. Um, that is, of course, a, a next stage of collaboration. Otherwise, it is a um, joint effort in, in sharing uh, research, uh, agriculture, in, uh, in the science, and uh, in digital technology and economy, which uh, both of us agree. Mr. Prime Minister, when you spoke at the Boal Forum for Asia, you touched upon the competition on science and technology, and you said, quote, the rivalry ahead can be either a productive war, destructive term. And how do you see the rising tide of politicization on the competition of science and technology among some countries? You see, why I refer to that uh, statement in the war mm -hmm. uh, conference is because we see the contribution of any country in science, technology, in digital economy, something productive. And we say, let us share. I don't see this as a threat, as a competition, or as a new uh, attempt to control. But that seems to be the position of some countries. So unfortunately, I, 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 unfortunately as I see it, whatever is achieved here is beneficial to the region. Uh, and the apps, whatever. If there are uh, excesses of concerns, then we should take it up. Specifically, problems in, in, among the users, or the apps that can be problematic, but they cannot be used to stifle growth or to consider uh, any uh, innovation as a threat. Let's talk about the China-ASEAN cooperation. Well, as a matter of fact, Malaysia was the very first uh, ASEAN country that invited China to have dialogue with the blog and also hold a uh, China-ASEAN summit. With uh, both sides now accelerating the negotiation of the 3.0 version of uh, free trade agreement, what role do you think Malaysia could play in this process? You know, we have been quite uh, forthcoming in this uh, because it's a very pragmatic uh, consideration. We have long tradition uh, relations with the United States and Europe and Australia and India, but uh, China is an important neighbor. And, and I think um, they have proven in the, five, for the last few decades, they have been very forthcoming, very helpful, and uh, very engaging. Even some more uh, controversial uh, issues, uh, even like uh, the South China Sea, we don't see um, uh, a very combative, uh, arrogant, demanding China. We, we see them as, you know, asking us to continue the dialogue. And that's why I, uh, our position, and more so under my administration, we should, uh, as I say, independently decide what is best for us. And what's best for us is to be good 
with our neighbors. The ASEAN outlook on Indo-Pacific was launched with a focus on ASEAN centrality. Is Malaysia concerned about some um, geopolitical fluctuations in the Asia-Pacific region? And how do you think China and Malaysia could work together to promote regional peace and stability? Yeah, uh, the formative period of ASEAN was to emphasize the need of independence, the need of uh, neutrality, particularly during the Cold War period, to avoid the tension. And that general position continues. We don't want um, the region to be a base for uh, military competition. That position has been quite consistent, uh, although we remain friendly to all countries. Uh, that is why uh, when the issue of AUKUS uh, rose, our position is you know, to express concern. Although the explanation was given, I mean, the Australians took a lot of effort to try and uh, you know, uh, convince us, and, and we, we, we appreciate that. But we do, on the, on the basis of our consistent position uh, since the beginning, not to allow for situation to aggravate into a military uh, tension and to be deemed or seen to be provocative. So that's why Malaysia took a, a more a tougher line on this, because it is not consistent. We worry it's not consistent with the issue of neutrality from the beginning, engaging with all and uh, not to allow ASEAN to be engrossed in this sort of uh, unnecessary provocations. So in fact, we have said repeatedly this interest of the international community for an amicable resolution to the tension between uh, China and the United States and not to see uh, China unnecessarily as a threat. It's not a threat to Malaysia. Uh, I, I don't know how it is uh, to other countries. You see? Uh, of course, they, they take up the issue of Taiwan. As far as our uh, policy is concerned, yeah, our policy is one China policy. Mm -hmm. Is it a domestic issue? Yeah, domestic because issue. Taiwan is yes. part of China. But as far as we're concerned, it's one China. You know, uh, we can express some views here and there, but then we cannot, um, as you say, question the integrity of these nations. That's been our policy, and we've been consistent at that. How do you understand the rising trend of anti globalization and anti multilateralism We always call for, you know, regional cooperation. Here we have RCEP, for example, right. and we have um, APEC. So we are all in it, you see, because uh, we are in a globalized world and for small trading nations like Malaysia, we should benefit from uh, you know, engaging with all countries. We believe in engaging, engagement and multilateralism. As you just mentioned, that now the world is going through many unprecedented challenges. This is a time we need critical solutions. We need um, various approaches and also, of course, more wisdom. So with that context, how do you see the significance of the Global uh, Development Initiative, the uh, Global Security Initiative, as well as the Global Civilization Initiative proposed by Chinese President Xi Jinping? Well, that encapsulates uh, the thinking, which is beyond just security or economic because you are dealing with humanity. Uh, and therefore, um, the issue of uh, dialogue, uh, civilization dialogue, of respect is important. And um, that is why I think uh, I consider that significant because it augurs well for, for nations and, and uh, the spirit uh, to deal with problems in the future. You see, um, we, particularly those in politics, become so pragmatic and so um, materialistic and uh, that they consider only the present issues. Uh, but the president, and I believe in our Madani concept too, uh, talks about uh, values, cultures, civilizations. Because Malaysia is a multiracial, multireligious country. The complexities in China is also known. So only through respecting others, understanding their civilization mm -hmm. and cultures and contribution, can you forge this new understanding, new compassion that, that leaders lack, you see? We lack compassion. So we talk in terms of strict, rigid, you know, ideological or racial tones. 
And, and uh, I think we should uh, build on this, um, the initiative of the president. And, uh, and I have told him, and he said, uh, very consistent with the Manadi concept. Mm -hmm. Is the value or the kind of philosophy you just mentioned, does that kind of echo with uh, your philosophy and value, which were written in Chinese woman? We're all one family. And we heard that uh, Chinese artwork of calligraphy used to hang on the wall of your office. So what kind of message do you get from that Chinese um, expressions? You see, when I said that, uh, and, and I tried writing in Chinese, uh -huh. woman to see each other, and, uh, I mean, it's actually, this is, we are talking about uh, humanity. And it's more relevant also in Malaysia, and, and, and of course, in the global stage. Because um, if we consider ourselves apart, then we only consider the rest as the other. And therefore, there will, there will become this clash. Uh, but if you consider us in, the, in this big family in the nation and family of nations, then I think there's less room for animosity and conflict and antagonisms. You mentioned about Confucianism. Actually, we all know you have a really deep understanding about Confucianism. And back in 1994, when you visited China, you actually paid a visit to the temple of uh, Confucius, right? Actually, by the way, I'm from Shandong, so okay. that was my hometown. <laughs> Not you, but yeah, I'm from Shandong. Yeah. So how has the value or the core values of Confucianism has um, influenced and uh, inspired you all those years? Well, he's a great sage. And uh, looking at his writings, Lun Yi, the Analects, you find that there's so much um, uh, wisdom mm -hmm. that we need to acquire. I benefit immensely to understand the other. And I think uh, generally this is also what is talked about the Global Civilization uh, Initiative. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, you engage, you respect their differences, you understand. And finally, there are too many similarities. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All. All civilizations condemn injustices, racism, religious bigotry, uh, arrogance of power, corruption. So it is about seeking commonality while respecting the differences of yes. each other. Prime Minister Anwar, we heard that uh, tourism was actually one of the issues that are high on your agenda this time in China. Well, Malaysia has always been one of the most popular um, holiday destinations among Chinese tourists. And now with international travel coming gradually back on track, you know, Malaysia could be once again a very hot spot for Chinese travelers. So as the prime minister now, um, how would you recommend your country to our um, Chinese uh, viewers and also Chinese visitors? Well, other than durian. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What are some of the untapped attractions yeah. maybe that you think are interesting to our viewers here? Yeah, we need to, to promote Malaysia because uh, it has, um, I mean, it's a beautiful country, you know. It's, 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 it is beautiful, very diversified. I've yeah, been here. Yeah, very diversified, you're right. And then the attraction is not only one area around uh, Kuala Lumpur, for example. Right. It is the East Coast, it is in Sabah, it is in Sarawak, um, it is the cave. So um, now when uh, China reopened, the number of Chinese uh, tourists have increased threefold. When you say that, I saw the smile on your face. That was really something positive and yeah, uh, <laughs> inspiring, right? Yes, of course. Because I come from Penang, see, which is an, actually a tourist island. So it is important for the economy. Um, the country, and then I used to present one constituency which is, uh, you know, full of hotels in the seabed near about one and a half hours out of Kuala Lumpur. Let's talk about the star ambassadors between the friendship of two countries, the giant pandas, because recently uh, some videos released by Malaysian National Zoo about uh, those pandas playing with their keepers has really went viral online. Those pandas, they were called Yi Yi and Sheng Yi, with the literal translation of friendship and yes. enhancing friendship. Yes. They were very well liked among uh, Malaysian citizens, and also they were born in Malaysia and be returning to China soon. Yes. So, Mr. Prime Minister, do you personally love those giant pandas, and also what kind of impact do you think they have played in um, enhancing the time-honored friendship between the two countries? But to be honest, my grandchildren know more about these pandas than <laughs> do me. Do they love that? Yes. They have been there, they've been to the zoo, they've been visited, mm -hmm. but I must apologize, I have not seen them. But, but that has gone viral too in the country. And I think if when, uh, when we decide to send back, it will be very emotional 
<laughs> departure, I think people will be very sad. But Heartbroken uh, moment for our grandkids, huh? Economic development has been one of the priorities for your government. And Malaysia is now facing with some economic challenges uh, domestically, which includes um, the uh, rise inflation, falling currency, as well as the losses brought by the floods. So the devils are in the details, right, Mr. Prime Minister? So what are the specific plans that do you have for tackling those challenges? You see, Malaysia used to do relatively better in the 90s. Right. I wouldn't say perfect because I know poverty was there, corruption was there, mm -hmm. but relatively better in terms of growth. Uh, the East Asia, this is called East Asian Economic Miracle those days. Although I don't think that is a fair um, picture to paint because there are some problems. You know, the, the problem with international agencies, when they get excited, they go and praise sky high that can lull people into complacency. But we have slided downwards for decades uh, after the 1978 crisis and uh, it was a problem of political instability mm -hmm. for some years. Mm -hmm. Now we are back on track. So the issue, and I have focused on proper good governance and uh, read the country with that image of corruption. Uh, so we, we have to act very tough against this because that alone will in, you know, uh, encourage uh, investors. So when I met uh, the investors, uh, one of the issues is they think that you know, there's stability and there's an attempt by the government to ease the manner we conduct business affairs. Mm -hmm. And that by itself will help. Then they will ask us for the clarity in policies. So I talk about green or climate-related uh, um, policy or business, and then food security. Mm -hmm. Then we talk about digital economy. But our part, on our part, then the infrastructure has, been, has to be improved. Mm -hmm. you know, ECRL is, of course, a major development uh, project under BRI, but the ports, the MRT and the LRT, all these things are going to be back on track. What are some of the key messages you think you've got from talking and meeting with Chinese leaders, with business um, delegates, as you mentioned, give you the confidence to foster this closer tie here with China? I think I've seen responsible leadership with a clear vision, clarity in what they would like to achieve. And then um, to understand that in a global community, to work with friends in particular, to make sure that we, together, we succeed and excel. Um, but what is, again, I said earlier, unique about uh, the leadership, and my experience talking to them and reading about it, mm -hmm. is that uh, it is not just political or economic imperative. Mm -hmm. It is society and humanity. That's why we talk about the civilization initiative, to understand, respect each other, and finally, we are human beings. Mr. Um, Prime Minister, it was a great pleasure and honor talking to you, and many thanks for sharing this, all those uh, very insightful views and experiences. Thank you so much. Thank you. During our interview with Prime Minister Anwar, we were deeply impressed about his strong will to develop the country, his appreciation for China-Malaysian friendship, as well as his reflection on major global issues. When addressing China-Malaysia friendship, he used a term, we are all one family, both in Chinese and English. And that's our most sincere wish too, that both Malaysia and China could work together to build a better future. With that, we're going to wrap up this edition of Leaders Talk. I'm Zhou Yun, reporting from Beijing. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.